G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. We have let the dust settle on the trade period at this current point in time. However, I thought it'd be an interesting video to have a look at the landscape 12 months from now and go through every club in the AFL and look at who their biggest contract headaches are, if you want to call them headaches. So players that will be the subject of some speculation and I've included some retirements that could happen so we can get a feel for what clubs are going to have on the agenda, which players do they re-sign, which players might leave through free agency, which might request a trade. And also you can get a feel for like where players come out of contract and that will also free up some money for various clubs. So like I said, going to go through all the teams alphabetically and not list every single player out of contract, but the ones that will be somewhat of a talking point. By the way, thank you again for everyone who's jumped on board and subscribed to this channel recently. It's been an awesome period of growth for this channel. We haven't seen anything like this for the last couple of years. In the last 28 days alone, 56,000 different people have watched a video on this channel and 40,000 people have watched a video for the first time on this channel. So if you're one of those sets of people that have watched a video, perhaps multiple times, times and not subscribe first of all shame on you i'm joking i'm joking but if you are someone who finds value in the content that i do make all kinds of football content all year round i'd appreciate it if you hit subscribe all right let's crack into it we're going to go from the adelaide crows all the way to the western bulldogs and talk about some of their biggest contract focuses in 2025. So starting with the Crows, they actually don't have too much on the agenda compared to some clubs who have a number of players to consider. So in terms of free agents, Lockie Murphy becomes a restricted free agent. Wayne Miller becomes an unrestricted free agent. These players are probably not two that I th imagine will be hard for them to retain. Perhaps the most important player that comes out of contract, maybe, is Nick Murray, which is not to say he's more important than, say, Wayne Miller. But I mean, he comes out of contract at 24 I do think could be an important player for them. I think he was playing well before his injury. So he being a key position defender will probably attract some interest depending on how this year goes. So they'll want to get him signed up. Further to that, they've got Brody Smith and Tex Walker, a couple of veterans out of contract. You'd imagine this might be Texas last year in 2025. So in theory, that could free up some money. I'm not too sure how much money he would be on. But a couple of potential retirements there in Brody Smith and Tex Walker. And then there's also Matt Crouch, who will be 30 when he comes out of contract at the end of 2025. Now, Crouch is the subject of some degree of speculation like every year. So it could be his last. It really depends how this year goes. We've seen some friction between the Crows and Crouch before he's nearly left the club. So just another one to keep an eye on. I'm not sure which way that will go. Let's talk about the Brisbane Lions. They've, they've got an interesting little landscape here. So they've got two restricted free agents that will be out of contract this year. They'll have to negotiate new deals for. That's Brandon Stasevich and Cam Rayner, a couple of pretty decent premiership players without necessarily being elite. I think Stasevich is a great lockdown medium-sized defender and Reina is a great impact player. Both of these players will attract interest from their home state. I know that West Coast has sounded out Stasevich and I know that Cam Reina surely will be courted by some Victorian clubs. What is the degree of likelihood they leave? I have absolutely no idea, but obviously being a free agent, Brisbane to keep them will have to offer a reasonable contract. It doesn't necessarily have to be the biggest contract they receive and Brisbane has a great record of retaining players. So I'm not overly concerned, but they will need to focus on getting these deals done. Cal Archie, also an underrated player at a contract. Connor McKenna at a contract. These guys are in their late 20s, but not free agents because they've played for other clubs. And there's also, you know, Dane Zorko, who turns 36 during this year. He's potentially a retirement option. He doesn't look like he's slowing down, but you never know. When players are in their mid to late 30s. One bad season could be the end of him, so Dane Zorko may or may not retire. As for young guns coming out of contract, Kai Lohman obviously had a breakout season. He'll be out of contract and they'll need to probably pay up. You'd imagine they'd, he'd get a fair bit of interest from back home. And Logan Morris as well had a really good first season. He'll be out of contract. I can't imagine they'd lose too much sleep about Logan Morris leaving. Let's talk about Carlton. They've got a few things on the agenda. Most notably, Tom DeConing, who will become a free agent at the end of this season. So we got both DeConing brothers out of contract at the same time and I can see Carlton going for Sam and I can see Geelong going for Tom and it'll be very interesting to see how this plays out. We've seen a lot of speculation Tom was potentially going to Sydney a couple of years I'm not too sure how that's going to play out so just on Tom he's a free agent while Sam is not so you know I'd imagine that he will garner a huge contract offer to stay at Carlton but also potentially from rival clubs as well so that is going to be a big area of focus for Carlton's list management team. Chera is out of contract Brody Kemp he was also you know the Saints made a late play for him this year so keep an eye on that. Jesse Motlop, a talented young small forward out of contract. Then they've got a few other key players like McGovern, Saad, Hewitt, Newman, sort of in their late 20s, maybe early 
early 30s in some cases. Uh, they'll all be out of contract. Nick Haynes is obviously on a one-year deal. But as far as retirements go, other than Nick Haynes, Sam Doherty will be 32 at some point during 2025. He might be the only one likely to hang up the boots, I would have thought. Maybe Mitch McGovern, in terms of their age, not necessarily suggesting that they should retire. So relatively speaking, Carlton's got a fair bit on there. Let's talk about Collingwood. They have Bobby Hill out of contract. Now, this is an odd one. He just requested a trade to Victoria and then has been the subject of some speculation about going to WA now, where he's originally from. Um, I have no opinion on whether it's likely or not. However, he is out of contract this year and will absolutely get some attention from clubs everywhere. But other than that, Maynard becomes an unrestricted free agent. We know North had a bit of a pop at him this year. Maynard strikes me as so loyal, he's unlikely to leave. But where Collingwood will have to make some decisions is the amount of 30-year-olds that come out of contract. My check will be 32, Jamie Elliott 33, Jeremy Howe 35, Mason Cox 34, Pendlebury 37, Sidebottom 34, Tom Mitchell 32, Hoskin Elliott 32, and if they sign Tim Membry, 31 and then there's Tomlinson who may, may or may not sign so a lot of players that you'd imagine some go and some don't. Now, I don't know who is likely to stay and who is not, and I'm not suggesting they're all going to retire at the same time. They're going to have to be strategic as to how these players get phased out. But a very, very top-heavy list there for Collingwood in terms of age. So I'll be intrigued to see what they do. There's going to be some interesting decisions ahead of them. Essendon's contract landscape is quite chill, actually. They've got Sam Draper, who becomes an unrestricted free agent, and being a, a key position player who is a free agent naturally will attract some interest, I would have thought. But other than that, it's pretty low-key. Obviously, Todd Goldstein may retire, considering he's really old, respectfully. He's still had a good year for Essendon, but naturally, you consider him a chance to retire. There's Jaden Laverde. There was a bit of speculation he'd move to another club. He'll be an unrestricted free agent. He wasn't out of contract this year. He will be next year. And Ben Hobbs, similarly, there was some speculation he'd move this year. Because he was contracted, that was far less likely. If he's out of contract, who knows? So that's just another one. You know, if Essendon want to keep Ben Hobbs, they'll naturally need to re-sign him this year. We've got Fremantle here, who are coming off another year of good retention. Obviously, there was a couple of years there where things didn't go so well. The way their contracts are currently placed, um, you know, they should be well poised to keep all their players next year. So you do have Andrew Brayshaw. He is a big name that will become a free agent. Again, personal opinion, even though he's from Victoria, seems very loyal. I've heard Hamish say there's no chance he's leaving. That's his brother. But nonetheless, he is going to be a big decision for them, certainly in terms of how much they decide to pay him, because you'd imagine there will be other teams offering more to try and prize him loose. They've got some veterans over 30 that will be out of contract. Alex Pierce, again, he's had such a bad injury run that touch wood, you know, there's always a chance he pulls up stumps, but you know, not really a massive concern unless something goes wrong. But Mickey Walters is 34, Nat Fife will be 34. At the end of next season, they'll be 34. These guys are certainly retirement options at this stage. And then there's Neil Erasmus, who I think has been a very well-performed state league player that can't get a regular game at Fremantle that I think, you know, if he doesn't get a lot of games this year, potentially could be a trade target for opposition teams. Let's talk about the Cats now. They've got a bit on the agenda, absolutely. So as I said, Sam Zaccone will be out of contract. Not a free agent though, because he's a couple years younger than Tom. But there was some speculation. Was it Carlton, I think, that were you know, asking the question? And I know that Melbourne were when the whole Petrarca thing came up. The Cats' retention is generally pretty good. So I'm not going to make a prediction that in that way. But Sam Zaccone out of contract means they will need to pay up a reasonable amount. Now they could just pay him a couple of years to get him to free agency and then everyone reassesses, but I'm sure his name will be the subject of speculation, especially when he's got an older brother at another club. They have some young talents to re-sign this year. Brad Close, Ollie Dempsey, Ollie Henry, Toby Conway, Shannon Neal are all players they want to prioritize, but similar to the Pies, let's talk about how many players they've got over 30. Dangerfield has not re-signed yet, but I'd imagine that gets done. So he, you'd think, would sign a one-year deal, meaning he'll be out of contract at 35. Cam Guthrie at 33, Jeremy Cameron at 32, Jed Buse 31, Blitzarv, Stanley, Mitch Duncan, all 34, and Atkins 30. So I think we can see a number of those players drop off. I'm going to guess that Stanley and Duncan, who technically have not re-signed for 2025, I've read it that they will. You'd think they'd be the first Cabs off the rank to retire. Cam Guthrie, Jeremy Cameron, I'd imagine won't retire. Dangerfield could go either way. 
Tom Atkins is 30, Jed Buse 31. They should stay. So you could probably see three retirements next year from Geelong. The Gold Coast Suns have a little bit on the agenda, not much, but they do have a pretty big name in Matthew Rowe. So again, not a free agent, but will be out of contract and I imagine be heavily targeted by Victorian clubs given he is from there. I imagine clubs will come really hard for Matthew Rowe. And uh, I suppose it kind of depends how well Gold Coast go this year. If it's like absolutely shit the bed in 2025, it'll open the door. I'm not saying it'll happen, but it'll open the door. But if Gold Coast have a really good year, I don't think they'll lose Matt Rao. Malcolm Roses Jr. out of contract. There was talk he tried to leave this year and then Hardwick was like, nah, 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 nah. But he's out of contract, so worth mentioning. David Swallow will be 33, potentially a retirement there. Sam Collins will be a restricted free agent at 31. Again, playing well enough where I don't think that's a real retirement. So not a lot on the agenda other than Matt Rao. After a bad year of retention this year for the Giants, um, they've got a little bit to consider this coming year or 2025. Finn Callahan will be out of contract. Again, I don't really think he's going to leave, but nonetheless will definitely attract some attention as a Victorian who's a former top three or four draft pick, I think pick four. So that will probably be their primary focus, re-signing him as part of their future. We've heard a little bit of noise, Leek Aaliyah might leave in the past, but he comes out of contract this coming season. Xavier O'Halloran was very open to a move to the Bulldogs, but GWS decided to hold him to his contract. He will be out of contract, so you never know there. Wade Dirksen also requested a trade, but was held to his contract. So given those players come out of contract, you have to consider them a possibility to move around. Callum Brown will be out of contract. Again, nothing to suggest he would leave, but nonetheless an important player who had a really good start to 2024. And Callum Ward turns 35 next year. That is outstanding. You'd imagine he'd be close to the end, possibly a retirement option. Let's talk about the Hawks. They're probably their biggest story or their biggest headache is James Warple. Again, it's hard to imagine them losing players at this current point in time, but you never know. He will become a free agent, having been at the club for eight years. Then there's also some young Young talents, Josh Ward, Culture Deer, Lloyd Meek, that are technically out of contract. Now, I don't think they're going to lose any of them personally, but nonetheless, a contract consideration for them. They do have a few veterans on the other side of 30. So Gunston and Bruce will be 34 this time next year. So you'd have to consider at any given point they could retire, um, but I might necessarily make a prediction there. And Sam Frost at 32, is he going to retire? Maybe not, but... Hawthorne just recruited a couple of key backs. He stayed loyal, doesn't want to leave, but 12 months down the track, who knows what that looks like. Next, we got the Melbourne Footy Club, and the, the player I'm going to mention here is not a player out of contract in Clayton Oliver. I just think we have to consider this a possibility to happen in 12 months. Now, this year, it was an absolute mess what happened. And apparently, Melbourne picked up the phone and chopped him around and then denied it, and then Clayton Oliver decided he wanted to get to Geelong, but Geelong couldn't make it happen, and in the end, they just parked it. Part of that as well, I think, possibly, is the fact that the Cats were wrapped up with Bailey Smith. So who knows, in 12 months' time, Geelong now have first-round draft picks they can trade. Could we see Clayton Oliver get to the Cats? I'm simply putting that there as a possibility, but Melbourne don't necessarily have to extend his contract to prevent that. Charlie Spargo becomes a free agent. Judd McVie will be out of contract, a boy from Western Australia. Again, I'd imagine he just gets some interest because he's a good young player, but nothing really to suggest he's likely to leave. And then a few players over 30 will hit the end of their contracts. So There's Jack Billings at 30. I don't know how that's going to go. It kind of depends how this year goes for Jack. Jake Melksham will be 30 that will be the end of his contract and Stephen May will turn 33 sometime next year so these are all things they'll have to consider. Let's talk about North Melbourne. Now they have one big name they really need to, to try and sign up and that's LDU. So he will be a restricted free agent this time next year. And I'd imagine until he signs a contract will be one of the biggest trade speculation stories all year. My personal gut is he probably stays, but perhaps it does kind of still hinge on how North Melbourne goes this year. If they go backwards, I think it'll just leave the door open for LDU. Now he strikes me as a loyal guy. I'm not gonna make a prediction on that. I think he's likely to stay, but you can imagine just about every team in the league will have some degree of interest in him as a free agent. Will Phillips was another player that was going to potentially move clubs. He was one of those sort of like outside the 22, inside mids, you know, along with Ben Hobbs and Neil Erasmus that were talked about as potential trade options. He was contracted this year. That will change next year. So you never know there. Aiden Call will be 31 again, probably playing well enough where I don't predict he will retire. I am interested to see what happens with Jaden Stevenson. Uh, I'm not too sure the way that's going to go. I still think Jaden is a really talented player, but I, I wonder if, if he has a bad year in a contract year, which is not my prediction, but if he does, 
Could he find another club or get delisted? That would be an interesting one to watch. Eddie Ford is another young talent there that is out of contract. But other than that, I think LDU is the biggest focus for North Melbourne. Let's talk about the power. Um, they've got a little bit on. Miles Bergman is probably their biggest priority. I think he's a very talented young player. He won't be a free agent, but out of contract nonetheless. And being from Victoria, again, will get some interest. I think he's underrated, to be honest. Ryan Burton, out of contract. Again, he was traded from Hawthorne. It's unlikely to go back the other way given he's South Australian, but nonetheless out of contract. Kane Farrell also hits free agency. So just a few players there to consider for Port Adelaide. Travis Boak will be 37. I don't, has it been confirmed he's playing on? I think it has been. Either way, his contract expires at the end of 2025, according to Footy Wire. Ivan Soldo will be out of contract in 12 months' time. So that will be an interesting one to watch. Obviously, much speculation about him going to Victoria after not settling. He could settle in his second year. Who knows? Richmond traded away a lot of their players this year, so there's not a lot really on the agenda there for them. Probably one of their best young talents on the list prior to this draft is Tom Brown. He will be out of contract again, not really worried about them losing him. So same thing with Tyler Sonzi, but a couple of players that they want to sign up and a lot of players out of contract there that I just don't know a lot about that I generally haven't been including those sorts of players in this video. But Tyler Brown probably stands out as their most important of the uncontracted young players. Two veterans are out of contract, Tom Lynch and Dion Prestia, that both will be 33. Not going to make a retirement prediction. I'd imagine as veterans on what is going to be an extremely young list, they'll still have some value. So probably both could play on. Depends how Tom Lynch's body holds up as well. He's been very injury prone. St Kilda have a big year of retention. I think here. They've got a number of gun players that are out of contract, young guns. So Naziah Wangani Miller might be the best performed of all of them. And being from South Australia, absolutely, may, maybe not even South Australian clubs, they'll all come knocking on the door for Naziah. So St Kilda will need to make the retention of him a priority. Same thing with Machito Owens, another kid I really like, and Marcus Windhager. So those three coming out of contract at the same time will be the primary focuses for St Kilda in 2025. Hunter Clark, restricted free agent. We've heard some trade rumors about him in the past. It kind of depends where it sits 12 months from now. If St Kilda have moved where they don't necessarily need him, we could see him move clubs potentially. Then a couple of over 30s who are not super important to St Kilda at these days. Brad Crouch just played the one game this year. He'll be 31. Zach Jones will be 30. Jimmy Webster will be 32. Webster might still be important to them, but I was more referring to Crouch and Jones there. So a couple of players that could potentially be delisted slash retired, but really it's Wanganin Miller, Machido Owens, Marcus Windhager that will eat up a lot of St Kilda's attention. Now we're at the Sydney Swans and Chad Warner will 100% be their biggest contract priority this year. It's not their only one, but there has been a lot of speculation about him getting back to Western Australia for some time now. So West Coast of Fremantle will be banging down the door there. It obviously is a good chance he stays, but at this stage, there is a lot of noise for a player that's had a contract 12 months from now, not even now. So that will be a high priority for the Sydney Swans, but they also have Braden Campbell, Angus Sheldrick, and Lewis Melican out of contract. Um, no real concerns about retention there. Campbell in particular is from New South Wales. So it really is about Chad Warner. But in terms of older players, Dane, Dane Rampey will be 35. Jake Lloyd, 32. Hamling, 32. Jake Lloyd probably won't retire. Rampey at 35. Surely you've got to consider that a possibility. And Hamling didn't play a game for them this year and may not get another contract. Now we get to West Coast, a team laden with talent that everyone wants. Um, we'll start with Oscar Allen. He is a genuine gun at the comp. There's no doubt about that. Restricted free agent. He is the co-captain. Apparently West Coast is already working on his contract. So we'll see. Not a massive risk, I would have thought, of a club losing its captain who is from that state. But until it's signed on the dotted line, absolutely will be a subject of some speculation. And you'd imagine someone like a Collingwood would probably go hard for him. Other than that, we get five players over the age of 30 out of contract at West Coast next year. So again, there will be some decisions that need to be made. Tim Kelly will turn 31. Sheed will turn 30. Jaden Hunt will turn 30. Cripps and McGovern will turn 33. So I reckon... Tim Kelly probably gets another contract. Jeremy McGovern could if he wants to. Now, he's the just about the oldest player I listed there, but he was just the old Australian centre-half back. So if he wants to play on, it's fine by me. Jaden Hunt probably still has more footy in him as well, but I think Jamie Cripps and potentially Dom Sheed with his foot injury, we may see the end of them this year. And finally, the Western Bulldogs. And this is probably the biggest free agent of all. Marcus Bontempelli will become an unrestricted free agent. Look, I can't imagine a world where he switches clubs, but nonetheless, until it's signed up, he will be the subject of some speculation. However, he's not the only one. Ed Richards is a very high quality player that becomes a free agent. Very underrated player. Then there's also Sam Darcy. So they've got a number of considerations here. 
Get the Bont signed up. I think they will. Ed Richards, it depends how good the offers come in for Ed. He could stay, obviously. But I reckon there will be a number of clubs going hard for him. Sam Darcy is a father-son prospect. But, you know, the thing that's really relevant here for the Bulldogs is he and Richards are probably going to get significant pay bumps. Bontempelli may not get a massive one. I'd imagine he's already on big money, so that probably doesn't affect it too much. James O'Donnell is a player I like. He'll be out of contract. And then we've got a number of over 30s as well who come out of contract. Trelaw turning 32. He just had just about his career best season, so I'm not too worried about him retiring. But you'd imagine Johannesson probably does. Liam Jones will be 34. Liberatore, 33. Liberatore is still a good player, but recent concussion issues, who knows? And Taylor Derea will be 34. So we could see a bit of a clean out at the top end of the Bulldogs here, but they have some genuinely big contract headaches, if you want to call it that. But there you have it, guys. That is every team in the AFL's contract headaches, I suppose, for season 2025. To different extents, like I think most teams will be in control of this, but nonetheless, we are, we are going to see a number of those players move clubs at the end of the year. So let me know in the comments, who do you think will move clubs at the end of 2025? Who is the biggest name player? I'm going to do a video soon where I predict the trades of next year. That'll be a lot of fun. But hope you got something out of this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being subscribed. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.